everyone and welcome to DKW and today we have got a very exciting show for you. You know that we love a controversial topic, we love <laughs> debating. We don't always see eye to eye, I must admit, although I do love these girls. I've got Jen <laughs> and Hi. Sam here with me. Hi, Hi ladies. Hi, Hi nice to be here. Again. Nice to be it here. It feels like it's been ages since we've actually been like yeah, just like three of us. Because we've had the panel shows, we've had Love School, we've had we all have. sorts we've going on. We've had so much going on. But today we're going to try to see if we can agree on some stuff. We've got Ooh. our famous <laughs> red and green card. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be voting on some current topics. So, you know, of course, if you want to get involved, you can get involved on our Facebook page, a different kind of of woman you can tweet us at DKW me ladies let's get stuck in how are you guys today you're right actually you know what I've got to be honest I'm getting there I, I feel kind of buzzed up <laughs> because I was taking some meds but I am fine viewers Aww. and you know what I want to get into these topics because we never see eye to eye so it's glad to be on this side of the seat. I, I, <laughs> I can't be on the fence today. To be, I was just yeah. about to say that. I don't know about seeing eye to eye. You're always on the fence, Jen. <laughs> I know. So. That, that might be something that she changes, I right? Well, I have so, no choice because today. one of the good things about when you're in the hot chair, when you're hosting, you you are allowed to be on the fence. Now I'm not allowed to be on the fence, though. So. And it's so funny because viewers, I guess, get to know us because I hate being on the fence. <laughs> I want to be <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get stuck in then, girls. Okay, okay so the go. first topic, children who have mobile phones. Mm. So I write the story. So the Guardian reported that nearly one in ten school children get their first mobile phone by the age of five years mm -hmm. old, a study su suggests. Um, on average, children are given a handset at the age of 11, but nearly one in ten has a phone at less than half of this age. Mm. My so, you know, most people, most kids get their handset at 11 years old. Mm. So that's, you know... Oh, oh, Show my age it. Like, yeah. that secondary school? That's that's secondary. Just, yeah, I think it's year seven. Year seven year of seven. secondary school. So year school. seven yeah. seems to be like a world away for me. Yeah. But they're saying that most would probably get theirs at like six years old, maybe that's even ridiculous. five. What do you guys think about that? Do you agree with it? So come on, ladies, green you've got to oh, get oh, oh, red and green. We are. Okay. We're going to use it. Jen, where's yours? You got it? So green if you agree, you think it's necessary, and red if you don't. I'm a red. Sam, you've got your DKW the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but am I allowed to be on the fence with this one? No, all right, Jen, Jen, you know what? <laughs> this is the first scenario. You cannot be on the fence. Okay. Why okay. do you want to be on the fence about it? I'll tell you why. And I'm I'm coming from like working with loads of children. It's got it, for me it has more cons than pros, and that's why I decided to be red. Mm -hmm. However, on the flip side of it, if I had a child probably not at the age of five, yeah. but a young child, maybe, I don't know, nine, ten, I would get them a simple phone. It's good to find out where my children are. Yeah, yeah. And it wouldn't be a smartphone because they don't need a smartphone. Yeah. And you can put things like content lock, parental lock, and so on to, you know, yeah. um, protect them from things right. like pornography mm -hmm. and unwanted games and st mm -hmm. stuff like that. However, having said that, up until the age, gosh, I'm showing my age now. <laughs> up until baby, the, Jane. No, but like in <laughs> terms of like up until the age of what? I had my first mobile phone when I was 14. Yeah. And it was, by the way, it was the Nokia face off. I don't know if you remember them. And it, you could take off the faces and change different colours. And I thought, oh, it was so cool. But up until that point, my parents didn't struggle finding out where I was. So how old, so how old were you when you got your first, first mobile? I was 14. 14 years 14. old. 14. So, yeah. you know in your teens and it wasn't really about safety or anything it was more of, it was more Being of a cool. fashionable yeah. yeah yeah it's a fashionable item that you can say to your friends look at what i've got and yeah. it changes faces and it's got games on it i remember the black and white nokia like do you remember, yeah do you remember, like you had no <laughs> colors and stuff but i remember going to school this might have been primary school actually i remember going to school with my mum's mobile one time no. and the thing was like do you know do you remember in that movie pretty woman when Richard yeah, it was like pulls those out this big mapping. mercury one-to-one yeah. one brick yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one to one. Yeah, and I remember I had it and I thought I was the coolest thing ever, but it was like literally like this big. Now mobiles are like tiny. What about you, Sam? When did you get your first mobile? Well, I thought you, I thought you were going to ask me what was my opinion. I thought I was going to ask me what was my opinion on yeah, mobile phones. She's probably I mean, going to I mean, you lot want me to give away my age as well. And, I mean, in, our, in my days, you know, mobile phones was not, not um, existent yeah, you when know, you on, a child, on a serious yeah. note. Yeah. On a serious note. 
and our parents was always able to monitor us and not even that we had a sense of respect mm -hmm. for our parents yeah. so you know your parents always set rules what time to be home for and rules and regulations were put in place and as a child you would have to abide by those mm -hmm, rules yeah. so I think mobile phones wasn't so even needed as mm -hmm. much I mean even the the, the, the the contact phone in the house we wasn't allowed to just use it like that just yeah. to call friends you yeah, know i remember ours used to be on a lock and key <laughs> you, you wow. used to have these little keys these little locks that you could put on the actual You're phones joking. and really? our, our parents used to have one on so that when they were away at work we couldn't use it that's a good point so, so, yeah that's actually a good point because i remember um I remember it's funny because my sister, she mm -hmm. actually ran up our, mo our house phone exactly. bill. Exactly. Like hundreds of pounds. So our really? parents were very, very strict. Calling, I don't know who. Oh my God. In saying that. Yeah, yeah, in saying yeah. that, the reason why I actually said that I, I would not give my child a mobile phone, I quietly agree with, Je with, with Jen that it would have to be a sense, it would have to be an age that they would be allowed. And that age would have to be at least. 11 plus mm -hmm. and I say that because I don't think younger than that they need it mm -hmm. yeah. because I think beyond that their parents are normally picking them up from school if there is a problem the schools are able to contact um, parents and things like that mm -hmm. but I think once they're going into into teenagerhood mm -hmm. I think mobile phones can be can be very helpful because mm -hmm. you know especially because there's so much there's so much bullying going on now yeah. I know a young lad it was a mobile phone that saved him. He was being bullied and followed f from school, teenage young, yeah. young guy, and he was able to use that phone in order to contact his parents and his parents was able to come and pick him up. Yeah. So it can be, it can be used as, as a safety um, mechanism, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, I just think that if a, a child is too young, I think you're taking away their social skills. I mm -hmm. think you're taking away their interaction skills. Mm -hmm. And I think that too young is, is opening too much doors for yeah, them. Yeah, because you mentioned about bullying, but what about nowadays, which is the new sort of craze, if you like, cyberbullying? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, children have been known to commit suicide because yes. of that. Uh, yes, you know, and definitely. obviously there, there's certain things, like I know you're talking about content lots, but children are so smart nowadays. Yeah. Sometimes you think that they don't know how to access this or that, and they know how to bypass stuff a lot That's of the time. Right. And with Wi Fi everywhere, they yeah. can sort of access like porn sites, adult yeah. sites. Even actually social media sites, sometimes the things that pop they up the on pop there, the side, they've got yeah. the pop-ups, yes, it it's exactly. quite dangerous, it you know. It is very, very dangerous. But then again, one needs to look into the type of phone, like um, mm. I remember my sister, she had gotten our nephews, it wasn't, it wasn't like a smartphone, smartphone, it had certain features on it, but it wasn't your fully fledged and iPhone it doesn't have to be or a, phone I like that, agree with you, you know, where you can go on the internet, if, mm -hmm. you, if you really are worried about safety, if, as long as it's a brick that can make calls <laughs> and receive calls, you can contact them. And yeah, and you can send messages, then I don't see what the problem is. I think nowadays it's really difficult to be a parent because it you, is, you are it divided. Is. Why? Because, you know, you can say that, I'm going to get you a little brick, maybe you could even get the little black and white phone if you like, if you could still find them. <laughs> but then, you know, you worry that your child doesn't have the best and then they face bullying because of that. Do you know what I mean? Because children are putting their parents under so much pressure, pressure. to have the latest. Yeah. But then they're I mean, under and pressure as well from school. Peer exactly. Pressure. And and they're, parents. they're being put under pressure by their peers. Yeah. So this is probably the reason why a lot of parents, it says here that most will give their child a, a phone by like five or six. Yeah. I've seen children with iPads, for instance. Exactly. I, that I will never understand. Exactly. I, I, I mean, my son Not that we're promoting Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, could, I could never understand that. What Unless you... For educational purposes, you know, you've got tablets and these kind of things that have um, like nursery kind of like school things mm -hmm. on them and they can learn how to read and stuff. Okay, but like I said, we grew up fine without that kind of technology. You grew up fine without mm -hmm. that kind of technology. So I, I just don't get it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was in the school. I, I mean, I, I, I did the same with my son. I mean, my son's 16 now and he mm -hmm. didn't probably have a mobile phone until he was about 14 years old. Right. And he survived. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> Right, well, let's move on, girls. <laughs> so, another one, reality TV. Oh, gosh. This is something that is quite new as well. Not as new as mobile phones, but um, the, I think it's the Desiree News Report uh, says that uh, reality t TV started in 1948 with Alan Funt's Candid Camera. But when MTV's Real World premiered in 1992, so-called reality TV mo moved full steam ahead. 
Um, since that time, the genre has offered everything from Tawi, Big Brother, mm -hmm. Bad Girls, uh, The Real Housewife, which oh, I gosh, quite like yeah. myself, and <laughs> etc, etc, etc. I want to know, ladies, do you have any sort of favourite reality TV shows? Um, oh, gosh. Uh, I have to say, I don't, to don't be honest. You? No. I'm I thought actually, you'd quite like reality TV. I, I'm not actually. I've never been a fan, really, have of reality not? shows. Like, yeah. If you ask me about them, what's, what's going I mean, Jenny's the one that actually keeps me updated. <laughs> I know, she, Jen. I must she's say, a, you are she's really an good. absolute you know, reality fan. I am not. I'm, I'm actually a reality fan of my own life, more than anything. <laughs> To be honest, your life, with you. your life is so interesting. You're just yeah, not, yeah, my life so is so interested. interested I, so. I, I for me, point. when it comes to reality TV, I just like the fact that they have such a distorted view on what reality is. I mean, the two main ones that I say that I used to watch was um, the Braxton's family reunion, mm -hmm. and once again, that's in the states. You can't even catch it over here. And um, the Real Housewives franchise, yeah. especially the one of New Jersey, some of them is just too OTT for me, but. I would just watch it and then, because the thing is, I watch sometimes online when I can't catch up with it mm. on oh, actual really? television. Oh really? Gosh, you go to that extreme, Jen. It's not extreme, wow. it just makes more sense. I, I'm not the type of person who will go home at a certain time because I have to watch that programme. Okay. There's I just thought, no thought, point. Uh, yeah. No. I wouldn't so, do that. Oh, hold but, on. I've just realised I forgot to make you vote, but I think everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody I'm knows. I'm about what's going <laughs> so, on. Yeah, yeah. So, so just for the sake of it, let us vote, let us vote. So are you for, you're against reality TV, are you then, Sam? I, I'm not oh, into it, God. no. You're into it, so you're red, yeah, I'm and red. you're what? what are you, Jen, you're not going to be on the fence, are you? <laughs> She's a oh, fan. do you know what? <laughs> Come on, Jen, admit it. You're she making this win. game no fun. Okay, whatsoever. do you know what? I'll say green for entertainment purposes. I'm green as well, for sure. For, for sure, entertainment purposes, green. and like I was saying, I mean. It just puts a fun spin on what you would like reality to be, but you know deep down inside it's it's not real. Like the um, Braxton's family reunion, what I do is I watch the seasons and then I watch the uncut episodes and then you see how much the editorial's right. gone into it. That how many is the times point. they <laughs> put on their makeup quickly and then the, it's like we're rolling. Oh my gosh, the cameras are in the house again yeah. and blah blah. You know it's fake, but it's that, just that's my point with it. It's so fake. It really is. Look, the fact is, I love reality TV, mm -hmm. and why do I like it? Because. You know, like Jen said, it's, it's not your reality, yeah. but you'd like to think it is reality. So yeah. a lot of the time I just push it out of my head. Like <laughs> there's a certain family that I'm not going to promote their show on here. Oh, there's a certain family that are very well known. Which and are the worst. Seasons and seasons <laughs> and seasons of reality TV. And I find them absolutely hilarious. But what I do like is there are certain things that can't be scripted. Yeah. So for instance, reactions to certain stuff. Yeah. So maybe they blow them out of proportion a little bit. But you know, I think you can sort of see how people react and human yeah. beings have always loved being nosy. Yeah, I mean. Do you see what I mean? So that's why people yeah. like it so much. I, I agree with you. I remember, I don't, I don't know if you remember a show called Punked. Yeah, yeah, Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. that for me, it's like you couldn't script the reaction on all of these celebrities that just think they're absolutely amazing. Yeah. And then one, one, you know, when they do these games on them or play these tricks on them, they're like, oh my gosh, yeah. do you know who I am? Yeah. Kind of thing. So it's just fun. For entertainment purposes, yes. But what I think it, what is, sorry, what I think is wrong is when people take it for reality. Mm. Like what Sam was saying, mm. when, you know, it's, it's really fake and people start to try and live a lifestyle that they can't keep up with because even some of these people can't keep up with their lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, this, this is it. And, and my problem is, it's what they're actually giving to the public. Yeah. You know, people do get so consumed with reality shows mm -hmm. that what kind of role models are they actually putting out there right. to the youngsters and this yeah. is this That's is my, th point. this is my point with a lot of these reality shows oh. i mean a lot of young people uh, you know are watching these shows and and they want to embrace this lifestyle yeah. that doesn't which, exist which doesn't exist yeah. and I, I think that's the main reasons why I thought, no, it's not something I want to entertain myself because I don't want youngsters to entertain yeah. so much. That, that's a good point, actually, because <clears> nowadays <throat> you're not famous just because you're you're extremely good at Talented. singing yeah. or extremely good at acting. That's right. You know, these people, they're not really, even though it's scripted, Some of them aren't yeah. talented at all. They're, they have, they're no. famous for absolutely no talent yeah. whatsoever. And, and they yeah. fight or maybe they're promiscuous or maybe yeah, they're, right, you know, prepared yeah. to go nude. And... I, I guess what you're saying is people have no values and are getting famous for having absolutely yeah, no values that's right. nowadays. That's I, it, I mean, another reason why some 
some people like myself watch it is because mm. it really makes you appreciate your reality. Mm. You know, okay, I might not be that ultra billionaire, but I have people in my life that genuinely love me. And then when you watch some of these programs, you're like, oh my gosh, they're so rich, but you know, they can't keep that together and they can't do this together. And mm. this is happening. There's so much drama. There's so much tension. So th that's another reason why yeah. I know it's a bit sad yeah. <laughs> that I watch it, but it's a good comparison sometimes with real life. It is a good comparison as well, because I think, for example, um, my friends and I took part in a competition which actually was taken from a reality TV show and it was a weight loss one and we decided to do that because that actually inspired us and as a result like Shireen who's my fellow DKW <laughs> is on holiday at the moment <laughs> <but> anyway, <laughs> um, she lost like about I think it was two stones and I lost three stones um, just because of that show yeah. that show actually inspired us to say actually we're going to follow that show and yeah. do that in our own lives so I think if you can take some positive stuff out of it as well. Mm. When you see, there's nothing like seeing people just like yourself on TV do something to make you believe, actually, you I can, can do it myself. They're not acting, they're not fakes, they're not from Hollywood, they're not airbrushed, yeah. they are normal people yeah, that I, think, I recognize. I think I would respect it more if it was just m more to do with everyday people. Yeah. And not just, uh, um, People who are, you know, they're they're famous because they have a load of money and yeah. they yeah. have a live a, live a certain lives. So, although people always attract to this, yeah. but yeah. I just think if it was if it was a mixture of reality shows, because a lot of a lot of these people who are who are famous, mm. it's because of their 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 reality. sense of they're rich. They've got a load mm. of money. They can mm. do all this type of live this type of lifestyle, mm. Mm. and. The ordinary people, you could get a lot of interest from them mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. you know? So I think in that sense, I think they should have mixed it up with, with different different yeah. type of people. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I did learn from reality TV is that money doesn't buy you class. Yeah, yeah I'm well, telling you. We like to teach you all <laughs> about exactly. that. Yeah. Let's go to a short break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we'll be talking more controversial topics. Back soon. Hi everyone, welcome back to DKW. Today we are talking some controversial and current topics and I've got Jen and Sam here with me and they're going to be debating them with our famous red, red card, green card. Actually, I'm showing it the wrong way. Green card, <laughs> red card. <laughs> Something like that, we will get it right in the end. I know yes. we're like turning it all over the place, but yes. <laughs> okay ladies, let's get back into it. Tell us. So we didn't really agree on a lot of the points there, but let's see. Office romance. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Right, so what do Bill Gates, Barack Obama and Julia Roberts all have in common? They all met their spouses at the <laughs> office. No. I actually didn't know that. I actually didn't know that. Funnily Is enough, she? I don't know if Julia Roberts has an Julia, office. Really, yeah, I was just thinking, is she an actress? She's an actress, she's an actress. <laughs> right, the Daily Rail reports that Given the amount of time that we spend at work, it is little wonder that many people find their passion and excitement in the office. Right, One in three people has had a romantic liaison with a colleague and 28% of British working women say they have been intimate with someone in their workplace. Oh, so guys, on. so guys, office romance, agree? Or don't agree? And Jane, you are not, you are forbidden to be on the... Okay, oh, look, no. she's got... Look, I didn't have to... You... <laughs> You're by yourself. No, no, no. no she's ch what? Sam has no changed way. her mind. <laughs> I'm the only person. Okay, you guys go first. I'm, 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 I'm a green on this one. I'm a green on this one. Tell me why. I'm a green because I think that. You know, when, you, when you're at work, like they say, and mm -hmm. I think here in this country, we spend a long time at work, yeah. um, sometimes too, too long sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you work with someone who's in your field, it's easy to get a connection with that person because mm -hmm. they are doing what you like. So that's one thing that you're compatible in anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? You're both possibly doing the same sort of thing, you know, you intellectually. Like, I find a lot of the jobs that I've been in previously that we've all been on the sort of same, same level. level. So yeah. we've all, you know, been to university. We've all sort of come from the same area. So you've got so many different things in common and yeah. you seem to just pull together into this workplace okay. and then, you know, you spend time together and so on and so forth. So I think yeah. that, you know, it's great if you can find... I know so many people who have married people that they've worked with. And yeah, obviously, yeah. after that, then you've got to consider what you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if you're going to continue working together where there's conflicts of interest. I this know people who, who have actually left their jobs because obviously they decided to yeah. have a relationship with a and colleague. But I don't think that there's anything where, wrong with it. Where do you keep... The, I'm not saying that there's something wrong with it, but yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that people shouldn't be seeking to find 
romance in the office. That's that's why I chose a red card because yeah. the professional lines eventually will get blurred, and you're not really sent to work to find your partner for life. You're sent to work to work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the that's the way so I you see it. That, yeah, it, it, it does. Giggly. It bl is it, and then you know, there's the backlash of when one breaks up with the other, and then the for other sure. one doesn't want to be in that office environment anymore, or even worse, when office rumor rumors and gossip. I've I've seen that happen. Yeah, that I remember. I'll never work. forget when I was working in, at this hedge fund. Yeah, there was a particular um, lady that had gotten involved. I think with a couple of the office staff there and they used to discuss their relationship with it's just not professional it's not nice and it just i think in certain places it doesn't give a very good connotation i just don't sam like you you <laughs> voted green i did you vote, vote green. green because i think that um why not it, it's it's not impossible if you if you're if you're a single person mm. and you end up falling in love with someone from work and yeah. you have a lot of good things in common I think why not? There's no rules and regulations to that. I think I think what the only thing what the person has to always remember is to be mature about the relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that they have to consider the boundaries at work. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, to make sure and if they if they keep the boundaries in line um, within their professional work. Mm -hmm. I don't see that th there's something wrong with that. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and like we said, we know that it does work because we, we know, like Gemma said, there's many people who've got successful marriages, mm -hmm. just like some of these people who, you know, Bill Gates and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obama, you know, they've got very, very successful marriages. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you guys a question and I want a quick answer, yes or no? Oh gosh. Should you tell your boss? If you're having a relationship with somebody at work, a colleague, would you tell your boss, Jen, yes or no? You've oh. got 10 seconds left. Oh, <laughs> can, can I, so I while she's thinking, yes no. yes. while she was thinking, I would say no. Because you wouldn't tell your boss. Not, a, not at first. I would only tell my boss if it becomes a serious if, if your colleague asks you out for a date yeah. and you're seeing that co you're seeing your work colleague on a friendly basis, you're getting to know the person, uh -huh. it's none of your boss's business because what you do outside is not actually your boss's business. Like This is where the boundaries come in and this is where a being mature comes in. Mm -hmm. You come to work, mm -hmm. you're not... Be, be mature and you don't need to be touching each other, you don't need to be hugging well, each other, you don't need to be being immature and silly be mature and then when you start to become very very serious maybe you're getting engaged maybe then <laughs> you can surprise everybody yeah. yes we've been together for a year now <laughs> and like, you know we're getting engaged <laughs> Jen, answer, what do you reckon answer I think it, de yes, it depends would you tell your boss if you got involved it depends on the type of environment or infrastructure say if it's a tight-knit business mm -hmm. we're all in the same office then eventually yes your boss would have to know because you know it's just going to be a bit strange going in seeing the person every day and you're just like hi hi bye bye kind it's of you know mature, it's, it, it is about maturity i agree but then again it, i'm just the type of person i guess who sees it as you should be going to work really to be so you, to work. you're actually saying that jen that if you fall for someone <laughs> in your workplace right you're, you're not going to have that relationship because of your your you know not necessarily i'm not saying that i'm saying you could it so could you're happen, against because you're saying you're but against I'm, it but that's because i'm not going into work thinking oh let me see i don't think anyone i don't think jen i don't think anyone's just unless they're a flirt <laughs> yeah, unless you're a flirt and you're always looking to flirt around at work but if you're not and you're a lovely young lady like our Gemma. And she sees, <laughs> use the <Jenner> as an <laughs> example. <laughs> and you meet, you see this guy, you've got a lot of, you, you meet this guy at work, mm -hmm. he's in your department or he may be in another department. Yeah. You find an interest in him, he finds an interest in you, yeah. and you're mature about the fact, would you be against that? No. <laughs> right. I wouldn't I'll be but once again. I, no, no, not completely. Once again, it just <laughs> depends on the mind frame. I just, it's just because for me, I'm, I've never gone to work with that kind of mind frame, number one. And number two, I've unfortunately just had really negative experiences from what I've seen of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why mm -hmm. I'm just saying, usually it doesn't work. I've seen it time and time, time again. And these are people that are quite intelligent, you know, mm -hmm. got high profile positions and they're, you know, high earners. And I, it's just I think not it, nice. I think, I think it depends also on the circumstances because when mm. they said here i can't remember what it was was it 28 percent got involved in the intimately the fact is was that at the christmas party, party thank Do you, know you. What I mean? <laughs> if it's certain situations where you're you're, you're not 
sober or you know you're you're out of your mind for any other reason you then go. you've got to look yeah. at that as well yes yeah. Yeah. And, I, and i agree absolutely with that i mean i i just think i mean i have a conclusion here which i, I really want to say that because I, th I think it's quite right think very carefully before you have an office relationship because I think you do have to think very carefully mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. it because it could uh, jeopardize mm -hmm. your job mm -hmm. and I think that if it's just going to be a casual fling I think that you shouldn't it should be a no-no if it's just going to be a casual thing but I, I, once again I think that have your relationship but be discreet yeah, yeah. okay that I like see that we agree <laughs> but one thing I will say just before we move on oh, is dear. I do agree with having relationships at work with your colleagues but not with your <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I love it. No, I'm all right. right. <laughs> next scenario. Next scenario. Okay, if you are under 16 years of age, you can have an abortion without telling your parents, mm. as long as two doctors believe it is in your best interest and you fully understand what is involved. In 2010, the NHS reported that two teenage girls had their seventh abortion. Wow, girls, I want to know. Um. What? What do you think about this one? Wow, it's a really it, tough it, one. It, it is a very tough one. It I want to hear from both of you actually. I know you're both because you mm. deal with children yeah. in your job, yeah. Jen, and you're a parent. Sam. And I'm a parent. And that's so I want to know. Think, do you I, agree? Well, I, I have I got, to say, we've got that to vote on this. I you agree? agree. You agree that parents should know. Parents should know. And I have my reasons why I think that. Jen, what, yeah. what do you think? Do you think that parents should know red card or green card? This one, on a serious note, I have to be on the fence. Jen, I don't think there's been any scenario. No, that the you've last one, I was a, I was a perfect red. Did <laughs> well, um, you change your mind? At the end? I, did, yeah, <laughs> I didn't change last my one, mind. Last she was a perfect red, and then she was like, mm, mm, no, I'm too sure. No, like, because okay. it really, like I said, in my particular role with what I do with young people and children, it does de depend on the circumstances. I, re I lean definitely, I would say, eighty percent mm -hmm. towards the green. Parents should be empowered to know what their, their children are doing. However, there are certain um, circumstances where perhaps letting the parent know might put the child at even further risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I.e. if the child is being abused by their own parents. Yeah, and I, that, which is I, even I mean, worse. for me, that's a different scenario. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think that the, the risk factor is that parents can intimidate or influence their children. Yeah on the decision. Yeah. For example, if a child has been raped, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? We, I mean, and that parents, maybe there's some Christian or some religious belief and they don't believe in mm. abortions or whatever. They may try to influence the child to say, no, you have to have this child. Yeah. I think at that, in, in those kind of scenarios, I think parents should not be allowed to intimidate or, or influence yeah. their children. But the children. thing is, but then, if you say that, for instance, like, oh, in certain religions, then... Not even the, certain religions. You know, if you say that, yeah. like that point, I don't agree with that, yeah. because mm -hmm. how would you know if I was a child... Yeah, you are being discriminated. And I just feel like if I was a child and I didn't want my parents to know mm -hmm. that I've come in for an abortion, I would tell you anything. Yep, they are of a certain religion. Yep, yep. they're going to kill me. They're going to do this. Yep. I would tell you whatever you needed to hear so that you wouldn't tell my parents. Yeah. They can't just be like this thing, oh, if they're of this certain set, religion. Set rules. Yeah, yeah you know, it has to be, okay, I, do we tell or, or do, do we, we not tell? And I think that's what they've decided to do. They've, the, the government, whether or not we agree or we disagree with it, they've decided to put a one rule fits all. And what is that place, one rule fix? Wh which is what we just read right it now. It's saying that parents <coughs> do not need to know. If there are two doctors that say that it's there's in the two best doctors. interest. And, and the thing is, is you know, it goes That's even further. I'm not, a, I'm not a legal or medical professional on that note, but there's something also that I know of, of um, Gillick competence, for example. Whereas if a child is 12 or 13 years old, and they're fully competent of a medical procedure they need to undergo, like maybe it means a full-blown anaesthetic, they're mm -hmm. going under cold, and they scream, oh, I don't want to do it, I don't want... They can actually take the doctors to court if they go ahead. And even worse still, the parents, I think, if my memory serves me well, has to take the child through the courts mm. in order for it to get done. Mm -hmm. That's how much power now these days children have mm -hmm. and I guess well, I guess one thing some, I'm I guess you, some medical one thing I guess you, I'm, I'm just getting how about for example you're saying this but for example just on the other side of that 
then we have these children, like I just said, who've had like six, seven, Which eight abortions. Which is abortion. not. This is mm -hmm. it. So, so if the yeah. parents don't know, then how are they, those children? Yeah, how yeah. are those children going to be able to cope with the underlying issues of why they keep, they keep pregnant? And this is the, and this is the thing. I, I guess that's where the medical professions, I would assume, would need to determine. Okay, is there some sort of underlying factor? Is there some sort of psychological issue going on there? And eventually, I this is me suggest, suggesting. And once again, I'm not a medical practitioner they would need to get in contact with parents to say, look, this is what's happening. And that's where, because they may be abusing themselves physically or sexually, then parent would have to know. And, and this, is why I, <coughs> this is why I agree that parents should know. If, I, if I, I'm a parent myself and mm. if my child falls pregnant for, at, at, a, at a young age mm -hmm. or whatever age and yeah. they, they decide that they want an abortion, yes, it's a, it's the, it's a child. But I think that child is going to go through emotional experiences are going to have there's going to be an aft, after effect right of right. what that 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 child could even get traumatized yeah because yeah. the doctors are only there with you for yeah, the they're procedure, there for just and then they say goodbye but you right. go and home back to your so parents you're going to go home back to your parents and your parents don't know anything about what what mm. you're going through mm. what you're mm. feeling and things like that. and i think this is where parents can come in as a help yeah, you know, yeah. to help, to advise and guidance, to care after that yeah. that child, mm. you know, rather than, you know, that child just left to, to no, no emotional well, um, support. Well, I can, I can put it on, on this sense. The fact that, you know, you can't get married without parental consent yeah. as a minor. You know, you can't do... There's certain laws that are put in place as a minor you can't do. Mm -hmm. shows a lot about you what we think. Smoke, you can't smoke. You can't smoke, for example. You can't drink. Yeah, so they're and, and, you know, yeah. it shows how competent we believe our children to be in a legal system, but unfortunately in medicine they don't see it that way. Yeah. They it, don't see it that it, way. It's a tough one because I guess, as with all things, where people don't stick to the balance, where there are extreme cases, then they need to think what is in the best interest of the child. Yes. And yes. I think because there are so many cases of abuse, I think because you know children are taken advantage of, yeah. they're thinking some parents are, are, are wonderful parents, but there are some parents who, yeah. who are not. And like you said, there are some cultures, some religions, no matter what it may be, maybe even because of their own backgrounds, that they would do something to yeah. harm the child. And the yeah. doctors are thinking, do you know what? Some kids get themselves into this mess, and they feel, feel like, do you know what, I need to have an abortion. And they're thinking, you know what, it's best that we provide it rather than them doing some sort of backstreet abortion. B abortion, yeah. And, That's you know, getting well. health issues and, you know, even possibly dying because they have yeah. to do it on the street. They, I think they would prefer them to come to the medical professions and say, you know what, we will not tell your parents. Mm. But I do feel that, me, this is just my personal opinion, that I think that if someone is a repeat a serial yeah, yeah. yeah. that you yeah. should then flag I, it up to parents. I definitely, I, I definitely agree. And like I said, this is all our opinion and stuff yeah, like that. We're not, yeah. we're not actual experts, but it's just sad, yeah, I guess, if is. they feel they have to do it in secret. It is. Yeah, I, I think so. And I, I think who gives the doctors the right to say that they know more than more, they have more passion or they know more what's best for the, my child than me. Yeah, I guess mm -hmm. what's even more sad is that children under the age of 16 are having abortions yes. and are getting pregnant. I think that's, that's the world that's that we live in today. Yeah. That's even sadder. Okay, let's go to a break and when we come back we'll be talking more of these. Back soon. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. And before the two breaks, we've been talking about some current issues. Tell you. I tell you, indeed, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> the world today and what our opinion is. You. And we're trying to use our green and red card. I feel like, you know, one of those sales girls. <laughs> <laughs> and just giving our opinion. So, ladies, let's get back into it. The paparazzi. I want to know what you guys think of the paps, mm. right? Okay. Right. In the world of paparazzi, one image of the rich and famous can be like winning the lottery. But the hunt for that shot can be dangerous, even deadly. Earlier on this year, a photographer was struck by a car and killed as he darted across the street after snapping pictures of Justin Bieber's white Ferrari. And the teen heartthrob wasn't even in the car. He did. Oh so the guy died. Goodness, that's oh awful. Dear. I know, I know. In a, statement, awful. Yeah, in a statement, Bieber said his prayers were with the photographer's <coughs> family. Yeah, of course. Um, hopefully this tragedy, and he said, hopefully this tragedy will finally inspire mi a meaningful legislation and whatever uh, other steps necessary to, I can't even read today, <laughs> to protect the lives and safety of celebrities and the photographers mm. themselves. Cool. Now, before we get into this, I want to know, ladies, and I want you to be honest. Right. No, we're not going to vote. You just need to say it. Oh, okay. Are you me. fans of gossip magazines? 
No, actually. No, you're not. I'm Are you not? not? I'm no. not. I'm not. I'm very not, good, very I'm good. I'm not, I'm, sincerely, I'm not. I just... I thought you would be, actually. Yeah, because yeah. you know I Jen's always yeah, up in there. Yeah, she's always up in the celebrities' faces. Uh -huh. so really, <laughs> you guys are terrible. Not. I really am not. I just, I just get pop-ups on my email. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, don't read the magazine. You don't read, yeah, you don't read the magazine. But, um, you just watch it on, your, on the for internet. For me, I never, I never took them too seriously because, once again, it's like reality TV. It's all fake and That's it's all right. editorial and it's all photoshopped. But, they're um, selling you something, they're selling what people want, they, right? Yeah, they basically are. And I think the sad thing with this photographer is the fact that he lost his life over, oh, forgive me, something so trivial, yeah. so a car, uh, you know, somebody's car, which Justin Bieber, by the way, is probably going to change it next week to Canary Yellow. Yeah. You know, it, it's just really, really, really sad. And in terms of legislation, well, at the end of the day, celebrities, they know what they're getting into. You know that the spotlight is always going to be on you. And these photographers, they're always going to be going after these celebrities because there's yeah. thousands and thousands of pounds involved. But what about the right to privacy right. now? Th that is... Um I did my, my law degree and I know that one. There's a human right, which is the right to privacy. Mm. So when you've got, when you look outside of your window, well, you know, they've got mansions on and you've got somebody going through your rubbish, mm -hmm. you know, looking through your documentation, when right. you've got someone who's literally chasing you, almost chasing you off the road. I don't even have to mention Princess Diana yeah. exactly. in this yeah. conversation. And when you've got someone who is hunting you down, wherever you look, you've got someone who's just putting a lens in your face, even mm. if you come out, you know. What would what, what you say to that? I mean, that, that's why I think it, it, it's, it's quite a... It's quite a it seems like a very scary position to be in yeah. for a celebrity because, you know, these paparazzi are able to capitalise capitalize on their misery even. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they make stories, they make fame from, from these celebrities. And yeah. I think it's so wrong mm -hmm. to be able to go into someone's life mm -hmm. to this extreme, Jen. But so you would say, but so are you voting green or are you voting I'm red? Actually, How you, are you totally against paparazzi? I, I'm actually, I'm actually I'm actually, because I'm putting my, I'm trying to have empathy for these celebrities, celebrities and I'm thinking yeah. to myself, if I was a, um, a celebrity, which I may be one day, <laughs> you know, I, I just, <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, would I like these paparazzis in my oh, yeah. face 24 seven? How am I going to be able to breathe? So and are you red? Is that what you're trying to yeah, say? Yeah, if you, if you saw... Don't be a Jen on me. Are you, you red? Saw, are if you, you saw my card, I'm not, I'm not into it, Jen. So I, you're, you're I'm totally not, against... I don't really even... I mean, most of the um, gossip that I hear, it's because I'm forced to hear it. Yeah, it's I'm forced to hear it from the news. I'm forced to hear it from people talking about mm -hmm. it. But it's not something that I am going to go out my way to entertain, to find out about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know Jen, I mean? would you say that you're, you said that you also don't go out of your way to sort of look into I these gossip stuff, but are you, oh, you're green, are but you? But I am green and I'll tell you why. I tell so you, you think why. perhaps do a good because, job? Because uh, I don't think that they do a great job, but I think if you choose to go into the celebrity limelight, you know exactly what you're going in for. No one says, I want to be a second rate Z, you know, celebrity, which no one knows. No one yeah. says that. And you know, the moment that you're in that spotlight, you're in that spotlight. There's yeah. going to be hundreds true, of thousands true, of, cameras, but, of cameras. Well, they have only. a life as well. And I know, they do deserve... They, ha they, they, have, they, they do have, deserve to have a life. They're entitled to have privacy, Jen. I know, Jen. I know but I let me finish what I'm yeah, trying go, to say. Yeah. What I am trying to say is that I, I do understand what you're saying. They mm. deserve to have a life. They deserve privacy. But unfortunately, with that type of job or role or mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're doing that makes you a celebrity, they are going to be... It's um, cons and unfortunately yes. that is the con that you're going to have to deal with I hate it when you hear celebrities I want my privacy I want my privacy but you're you know you're a star that makes a billion dollars in one you know Pepsi ad and then you're all there and you want the cameras to be on you so that you can get even more famous I mean but maybe they argue that just because I'm doing my job you know like for example we could argue we're doing a job right now mm -hmm. D does it mean just because I'm doing my job and I've got a talent to sing or mm -hmm. you know as some sort of artist that that someone should hound me constantly, look through my rubbish, yeah. chase me down the street, I've, I've take on, pictures I've of my children. I've gone on my honeymoon with my with true. my fiance, it's and I'm in a yeah, like what happened to Kate? Do you need to yeah, see what I'm my body honeymoon. looks like? Yeah, but unfortunately, unfortunately, like you quite rightly said on one of our shows, with the kind of position that you have, with the kind of role that you hold in society, whether politician, celebrity, whatever it may be, 
you are going to have eyes on you. You're going to have people scrutinizing you. You're going to have also have cameras on you. There's nothing you can do about it. And whether we love it or we hate it, the paparazzi will always be there. So they're going to have to learn how and, to do it. And I've also and, got and, a little and, challenge. And perhaps, 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 perhaps lose their life. Because oh, yeah, they will lose Sam, their life. You, you said that you're totally against paparazzi. You don't look at gossip magazines. You don't want to look at their pictures, etc. No, I et said. Et uh, what however, I would say, however, I'm forced to. You're forced to. However. I'm forced to. I don't agree with that. And why okay. don't I agree? Because mm -hmm. I think that, for example, the paparazzi provide us with a lot of information mm -hmm. that is sometimes very necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they go out of their way just to get that shot. Mm -hmm. And that shot, it gives us so much information mm -hmm. that sometimes we need it. We yeah. need it as a country. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to know, like, for example, things that are happening in government. It's not just about celebrities. Yeah. They work across the board. Mm -hmm. So some of this information that they provide us is really useful for us yeah. as a public. And sometimes Don't historical. I think, I, think, and historical. I think what it is, yeah. Jen, with everything, we've just got to be a balance. Yeah. yeah. And there has to be a sense of boundary yeah. with like everything. Like, for example, let, let's, go to, uh, let's go to the good side of it then. Like, you know, Prince William and Kate got married. Oh, yeah. Look, then they had a there baby. Was, there was not one photographer there. Not one there. photographer. Imagine you know, you never see their pictures. Uh -huh, you know, you uh -huh. never see the baby. Life would be pretty boring. So <laughs> I was very happy that there were paparazzi yeah. there mm -hmm. to take the shot. And I think, it, like I said, and unfortunately, such things have their pros and their cons. Unfortunately, with this, it has more pros than cons, but that's what they're going to have to take with on the chin because that's the type of job or lifestyle that they chose. Mm. Mm. I'm one, sorry. One thing I will say is that there are... Don't a be sorry, Jen. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of... Uh, I don't totally agree with your point, Jen, about, you know, they make a billion dollars or what have you. I don't agree with that. Point Not all of them, but yeah. uh, uh, the ones that are really high profile that get harassed, yeah. all the time they're usually earning a lot yeah and I, I don't think because you're earning a lot that you should be hounded etc however sometimes no. and they're usually the ones that aren't so famous they call people like you know someone i'm not going to mention her name actually <laughs> been known to call the paps and say oh i'm going to be here at this time sometimes they go yeah. to certain they restaurants the yeah they, they go to the certain fame. restaurants instead of going to the little coffee shop on the <laughs> side they'll go to a certain <laughs> restaurant where they know no, that, that everyone's going to be yeah. and the fact is I think the paparazzis need the celebrities and the celebrities need, need the paparazzi. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree there. there because I believe some of the so celebrities actually do things on purpose yeah. just to get that attention, yeah, don't you, you think? Know, oh, yeah. I think so as well. Yeah. Well, something more similar. Yeah. Let me just get my little card out. The sixth one, social media. Oh, and I want to know what you guys think about this because it's quite related, isn't it? So last year, the use of social media reached one billion users worldwide. One billion. Gosh. So far, <laughs> 2013 indicates that growth is nowhere near close to slowing down. Wow, I certainly gosh. love social media, but anyway. Yeah, I was, we I was know about your that. Story. I was <laughs> that. Yeah, You know me, Jen, right? <laughs> Facebook is still the most popular on, um, in line for place for users to get connected worldwide. And Twitter, according to the study conducted by Global Web, Web Index, is still the fastest growing social network by active really? users. Yeah, yeah. People are tweeting all the time, Jen. You've got to get with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are living in the digital era and social media Media is undoubtedly integrated into our daily life. One can say that people check their personal <laughs> profile and share content on Facebook and Twitter before they brush their teeth Good and girl. have a shower in the morning. <laughs> mm. oh, is there anyone in, in here in particular? <laughs> Are we having a vote on this? Right, I, I personally yeah. didn't take part in that study, but hands up. I, do, I keep best. forgetting to get you guys to vote, but so hands come up. come on, right. Jen. What's, what's the, the actual is, question? What are you trying is, to get from so, us? So what would you say? You know, social media, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Oh, et cetera, gosh. et cetera. What would you vote? Would you vote green or would you go red? Oh. I'm going to be different this time. Okay, red. Even though I do like it to a certain degree. You like it? So I want to know. To a certain degree. I want to know. I'm, I He's on the fence. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally green on this one. I'm, 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 I'm not gotta, totally gotta I can say. actually, so then I'm differently. I can say that I'm not totally green. I lean slightly towards the red the side. The red side. Yeah. And uh, But you know this thing, I didn't take part in this study before they brushed their teeth, but I must say that I am one of those who... I knew it! <laughs> wow. My, my, my smartphone um, does lie next to me on my bed and I, <laughs> it's the last thing I check at night. Are you one of those people, like, when you're gonna get married, just like wait, wait, wait! I just need to change my status in front of the whole congregation. <laughs> married. I can, I can actually picture Gemma doing yeah. that. Actually. Doing it at the altar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, it's it's just my my thing with social media. It you know it has its pros in the sense of you can do business and stuff like that. Yeah. 
However, having said that, it makes people very narcissistic, have a very eye, right. eye, eye view. And yeah. it really destroys one's social skills as well. Yeah. You've got people that are absolutely brilliant on Facebook, but when you meet them face to face, you're like, how bland? <laughs> Your yeah. Facebook doesn't show like 10% of yeah, what you I really are like. I, I, I totally agree <laughs> with narcissism because I think that people are all on social media to prove how wonderful their life is. Yeah. It's like a whole, I think on social media, you can create a new reality, That's just like reality yeah. TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's coming more down to pe real people. Real people. But unfortunate, people do tend to fabricate how, some of the things how, yeah. that they actually do post, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think like sometimes I do look at some of my Facebook friends, I should say, because they're not really friends. And yeah. I know what you mean about people. I've met people, and I think I've said it before on the show, it's like, you know, on Facebook, they're absolutely wonderful to me, commenting on my pictures, etc. And then I see them in person, and they walk straight by. And I know, that's like, quite Hello? bizarre, that is. Well, I just don't find that get it. You should have, like, now a league of different friendship groups on you Facebook. You do, like, you can Best list friends, them. like BFFs. I know, <laughs> I know. You can kind of kind of see, kind of I didn't even know friend. that. that. I, I, think, I think the risk with social media, although I do like, I think the risk is that you can put too much out there yeah. on impulse. It needs to be and in like, control, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think I think you've got to be in control of your emotions. And I've I've known some Facebook friends, like I said, to put stuff on like, oh, he's a this and he's a that, and slating people or if they've broken That's up with someone nice. to put it on Facebook. And I've actually known somebody who's actually put stuff about their the company they worked That's for. That's not nice. And I think that you've got to be really careful if you know that you're sort of emotionally detached many times that you should just not go to social media yeah. at all. Don't tweet yeah. about it. Because no, unfortunately, people do actually. I mean, I, I'm all for social media, and I, I love Facebook. And, yeah. And, but I, I make sure that I use it in a positive way. Yeah. yeah. You know, not not to not to tarnish someone's life mm -hmm. or to hurt someone. Yeah. And I think this is where the balance has to come in. I I think it's important that they ha they should have some kind of control yeah. what is allowed mm. what is posted you know you get people who post themselves practically naked yeah. Yeah. things like that I, I, I don't agree with yeah. and yeah. I think they, they need to have some there has to, there has to be a line that is drawn mm. regarding what is posted and yeah. I think it's dangerous because people have been known to be um, persecuted yeah. as we know people have lost their their lives because, because of it, because of the so on, things, yeah. things like lies have been promoted, so relationships yeah. have actually even been destroyed yeah. because people put fabrications, things that yeah. are untrue yeah. about other people, and, and be people addictive. believe it. And it yeah. can be addictive as well, Most really time yes. consuming. I think, I think the so thing that's the negative side. Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of those things, they do serve a positive purpose um, if you're going to use it in a positive light. Like, Life, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. if you have like a positive, positive got it, lifestyle, but you've got to use it responsibly. And you know what? Don't be addicted to it. Get a life. Go out. Interact with people. Human, real human beings. Don't yeah. be stuck in front of your computer on your phone all the time. Yeah, yeah. See, that point I agree with because I just feel like you know, if you do sort of put as much effort into your own life that yeah. you do on social media, yeah. then you know yeah. you'd probably be a lot more happier. Most definitely. Well, girls, it's a wrap, unfortunately. And while we're talking about social media, if you want to keep up with us, <laughs> <laughs> then we do have a Facebook page, A Different Kind of Woman. You can check us out there, keep up with us. And we do have um, a Twitter account as well, so it's at DKWMe, so you can keep in contact with us while the show is not on. Ladies, we've got to conclude. Oh, wow. And I, I personally don't know how to say, say this, really. Oh, I don't know goodness. what to say in my conclusion, but mm -hmm. what I would say is, when I was listening to you guys, I thought it's so wonderful because we all are different in our own way. We've That's got our right. own opinion. We don't just follow the crowd blindly just because people say you should go this way, we're going to go this way, or you say that way. We, we are different in our opinion, and that's mm -hmm. what's so wonderful about this yeah. show. But one thing I will leave people with, I think in everything that we've said, the one thing that underpins it all is uh, morals and values, it, I yeah. think. I think you need to have your own set of principles. Right. And whatever they are, you need to stand by them. That's and say, it. you know what, I'm going to live by this. It doesn't matter if the world is going this way. It doesn't matter if it's going that way. These are my principles and I'm going to stand by it. And this is why our famous green and red card game is so popular. Because <laughs> it allows people to do that. Okay, so we'll be back uh, this time next Sunday at 4pm. And until then, see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.